Okay. Um, we're going to go over problem solving with uh, exponential growth. Okay. Um, so here's our problem. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, world population clock, that's all one title, uh, the number of people in the world in 1950 was 2.5 billion. Whoa. The population has grown at a rate of approximately 1.7 per year since then. Create an algebraic model to predict the population in the future. So that's our first question. And use your model to estimate the population of the Earth in 2030. Okay, we'll do some extra stuff with it because I think it'll be interesting to see if this has been uh, the correct growth rate right up until now. Let's see if we can estimate today's population. Um, so in an exponential function, thank you, go away. Um, we deal with y is equal to um, a, which is like your initial starting value, and then 1 plus, um, sometimes they'll call this uh, letter r, which represents the growth rate, and then to the power of, is this blue? Yeah, there we go, x. Um, we'll write what each of these is. So a is, uh, we'll call it starting amount. It's known as like the initial value or whatever you're starting with. Um, R is growth rate, okay, and just as a quick add-on to that, um, it's growth rate because there's a positive symbol here. If we turn that to negative, it would be called decay rate. It's exact same formula, just it's going down instead of going up. And finally, doo -doo 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 -doo, X. Uh, X is our um, time. So depending how long everything takes to pass, they'll call these, like, sometimes they'll call them periods, or I guess you could call it, uh, um, you could call them intervals is another word. Intervals. Uh, it really depends on what you're measuring and how long it takes, okay? And we'll figure that out from rereading the question. So let's see if we can figure out what these three are, um, a starting point. So according to blah, the number of people in the world in 1950 was 2.5 billion. The population has grown at a rate of 2.7 per year since then. So what value do you think is our starting point here? 2 yeah, 2.5 billion. There we go. That's going to be our starting point. So we're going to highlight that. And we're going to say that A, go away. A is equal to, what we're going to do to make this a little simpler for ourselves, we're actually just going to write 2.5. But we have to know, make a little note, uh, we're going to say in billions. We're going to get an answer that might be, who knows, could be 10, could be 15, could be 100, but it's going to be billions. So if we get 100, it's 100 billions. If we get 10, it's 10 billions, okay? So that'll help us um, simplify this a little. Uh, what is the growth rate? 1.7. 1.7. And what's important in the growth rate is per year. That is actually what informs us about our intervals. So we know all of our intervals are on a yearly basis, okay? So in terms of A, we just have to create an algebraic expression. We essentially got the two things that are going to need. We need an A value. We need an R value. Oh, I never wrote it down. Oh, actually, R is equal to, when they write 1.7, do we write it as 1.7? No. Uh, well, how do we write it since it's a percentage? Uh, let's see. Do you think it's 1.017? Uh, oh, are you doing all of the work inside the brackets right now? We technically don't need it. We just need the value of R, so this 1 wouldn't be here. So it would technically be 0 0.017. Yeah, exactly. And the way you get that is just taking 1.7 and dividing by 100, and you get 0 0.017 in case you're unsure. So, for A, we've actually got all of our criteria. We can build our model relatively simply. Let's go back to black here. Um, y is equal to A was 2.5. Let's do it in red. 2.5. Uh, yes, we do. Excellent. 1 plus 0 0.017. And again, we can simplify that, which we're going to do. And we still have... Our x value. Now, because it's an algebraic model, when they say that, what that means is you're still going to have a y and an x value in this. So you're not actually solving for anything, okay? So what this tells us is we know we can put in any value for x, and that will help us solve y. And technically, we can put vol um, values in for y and help us solve x. That's a little harder to do in this situation. But this is our algebraic model. All we need now are values of x to figure out y. And y is like the future population in this case. Um, so we can simplify our model. I'll write it in black. Y is equal to 2.5, 1.017 to the power of x. That's our simplified algebraic model. Um, 
And with that being said, ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to shrink this a little. Okay, we're not going to do that. It's gone as many different things. We will just add another page. Sure, why not? And then I'll very quickly make it. That's what I want. Great. Um, let's get back to page one so we can see. We need uh, to use your model. Use your model to estimate the population of Earth in 2030. Um, we'll do that, and then we'll find today's population and kind of see if it ends up being correct, okay? So we'll have our, our model here. We're going to calculate what our population is in 2030. Um, so we go to the next page. There's one other piece of this we're going to have to kind of write down. Here's our model again. Y is equal to 2.5 times 1.017 to the power of X. Now, they want population in 2030. Great. Um, remember how I told you it's intervals? Okay. And um, we said our percentage was per year. So the question is, when it was 2.5, how many intervals, or per year, so how many years have passed to 2030? Um, what was the year when it was uh, 2.5 billion? Do you recall? 1950. 1950, perfect. So that other piece of information is really important here. So 1950 to 2030, how much time has passed? Uh, we can just subtract it, too. So we can go 20, yeah, that's right. 50 is 80. You'd have to borrow and do that. Great, 80. So in other words, x is 80 in this case. Wonderful, y is equal to 2.5, 1.017 to the power of 80. Um, okay, that's a very large exponent. So let's try it on our calculator here. Uh, 1.017 to the power, mm -hmm, there it is, of 80 equals... 3.85191, so we're going to round to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 decimal places. So help me with this, because I'm not going to be able to remember it. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go 3.85, and you remember 191, okay? So, uh, it becomes y equals 2.5 times 3.85191. Perfect, good teamwork. Um, now that we have this bracket, we're going to multiply these two values together. Again, we'll go back to our calculator for that. In fact, I think I can just bring my calculator up. I can, but it's not in there, so let's get back out. Take this value, multiply by 2.5. 9.62... Yeah, let's say 63, 9.63. Um, it makes a really big difference in a moment. I'm going to explain why. Uh, y is equal to 9.63. Um, is that it? Is that the population? There's going to be 9.63 people in 2030. What do we say that this was in what year? Billions. Billions of people, yeah. So to convert this to billions, we technically got to multiply by 10 to the power of, what's a billion? Nine, right? Nine decimal places? It's kind of like, I don't know if you remember scientific notation, but we're going to have to move this decimal place nine times over. So it goes 963, so it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, there's our value. 9630000. Zero, 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 zero. 9630000000. If we were more accurate, uh, 63. Nine seven seven two seven. Let's try. Nine You're right. You're right. Excellent. Thank you. Nine six two. That is actually the difference of um, almost a little under a million. This is like the difference of three hundred thousand people. That's a lot. That's all of the United States. So our rounding there, approximately. Because we rounded, we literally cut a whole country out of the world's population, right? So just got to be aware of how big a number is when we're sometimes rounding. Um, using this, okay, what year are we in right now? 2018. That's right. Uh, see, I don't know why that didn't do it last time. There we go. 
Let's take our algebraic model again. Y is equal to 2.5, 1.017x. If it's 2018 right now, and that population was uh, 1950, how much has passed? 68 years have passed. Let's attempt this model one more time. At 68. This should estimate our world population right now. So I'm going to do this all in one calculation on the calculator. Um, let's go to the calculator, clear it, 1.017 to the power of 60, whoops, thank you, 68 equals times 2.5. says there should be 7.662 billion. Oh, yes, thank you. 7, 8, 6, 6. 2 billion. Okay. There's a really cool website. I'm going to attempt to find it right now. Let's see. I think it's called World Population Counter. Yeah, and it like counts as it's going. Let's see if it's doing it. Uh, population clock. Okay. It says the population should be here we go. Seven points. See, so it's cool. It's pretty cool. Lots of ads, whatever. 7.6, and we got 7.8. We're a little over. Again, this counting is assuming it's counting births and deaths, which is not actually doing. There's nothing in the world that monitors all of our population. This is just an estimate of the world's population. But that's how we can work with that model, okay? Um, oh, one last thing I did want to show you is how would our model look on a graph? Uh, it would be y is equal to our a value. Um, yeah, be, yeah. you know what? You're right. 2.5. That's right. Let's do with our model. 1.017 to the power of x. Now, it's going to be hard to see because the pop. Ah, there we go. Look how fast this population grows, okay? So another way we could have done this, um, remember, at year zero here, mm -hmm. and remember, this is in billions. It's at zero, 2.5. So that's year 1950, okay? 50 years from then would be the year 2000. So if I say X equals uh, 50, which is 50 years down the road, I did not do that properly, five, zero. It should be at 5.8 billion. We said that we were at um, 68 years. So this intersection point, 7.8, that makes sense. The other X, what was it for? Thank you. 80, 9.3, 9.6 billion. Okay, there we go.